According to Malcolm Gladwell, the only way to perfect a skill is to practice it for 10,000 hours. You've been doing these videos for 10 years and you still suck at it. And sometimes even that doesn't work. Not so in video games, however, which are always looking for fun, creative, or just downright bizarre ways of teaching your characters new skills and abilities that don't take you anywhere near a gym or a textbook. See for yourself in these seven ways to new learn skills gaming video. Spoilers beware! Damn it, you'd think I'd be better at this by now. Kung Fu or Gong Fu means mastery through practice. But is one life enough to know Kung Fu? Getting old isn't something that generally happens to video game characters. Even Mario, who charitably looks about 40 years old, is, according to Shigeru Miyamoto, only 24. That mean. He's had a hard life, what can we say? However, aging is a vital mechanic in third-person martial arts brawler Sifu, and is in fact the way you get stronger in the game. The way it works is that, thanks to a magical pendant, every time you die in Sifu, you come back to life a little bit older than you were before. Death in Sifu is the only time that you're able to use your accumulated XP to buy new skills. So even though you're coming back older, you'll be coming back stronger and better equipped to handle whatever it was that handed you your youthful ass the last time you were here. <laughs> However, the more you die, the faster you age, and the older you get, the less health you have, reflecting your increasingly frail state. And past a certain point, your pendant won't bring you back anymore, making that death your last. So the older you are, the stronger you are, and the more techniques you have. But the younger you are, the more robust you are. Makes sense. At the very least, it explains how Mario's knees can handle that much jumping. In a marked departure for the long-running Like a Dragon series, the two most recent games have been turn-based RPGs, which does mean less real-time brawling, but does mean more utterly bonkers summons. So a net positive, all in. What it also means is you control a party of characters now, and those characters can switch between classes, or as the game terms them, jobs, including such diverse roles as host, chef, and football player. <laughs> The way you unlock these new skills in Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, however, is a bit different to what you might be expecting, and basically consists of stumbling across people doing random things, and then imagining how those things could be used to beat people up. Some of these make a bit more sense, like fire dancing. Others, on the other hand, make less sense, like house cleaning. For the real choice skills, though, you're going to want to visit a travel agent called Allo Happy Tours, where you will meet their terrifying mascot, Allo Happy. See you next to Happy. The travel agent will then book you onto their various day trip excursions, one of which will take you for a water gun fight that teaches you how to be a cowboy. <laughs> They also do a beach yoga excursion, which. something about ninjas? Or you can always take a disastrous paragliding trip that teaches you how to fall to your death. Oh, no, wait, it was Action Star. I should have guessed. Overnight, my world has changed. The gnawing hunger inside me. Every night, it must be appeased. The thing I've become. Vampire. In Vampire with a Y, you play a character called Dr. Jonathan Reed, who is both a vampire and a doctor. So you have to balance keeping your Hippocratic Oath with keeping yourself topped up with delicious blood. Are you alright, Doctor? I, I 
can't see. Over there! The problem is that feeding on all those palatable platelets is the best way to get XP in Vampire, and if you want to level up your character, you're going to have a very hard time doing so without getting through more blood than the transfusion clinic nearest to the World Amateur Knife Juggling Championships. I did not choose the thing I've become, but I can choose the lives I now take. Okay, that's fine, you think to yourself. I'll just chow down on some rats and street criminals and what have you. But Vampire is wise to your scheming and also takes into account something they call blood quality. In Vampire, not all blood is created equal, and in a cruel twist of the knife, the closer your relationship with the various NPCs in the game, who all have detailed backstories and relationships with one another, the better their blood quality will be. Victims with better blood quality give you better XP boosts if you choose to feed on them, an act which is always fatal. I'm sorry, Nurse Brannigan. I won't witness the great doctor you were destined to be. It's also important to note that the Spanish flu is devastating the city during the events of the game, and allowing it to spread means more people will get sick, causing their blood quality to go down. So essentially, if you try and play as a nice character, helping people out wherever you can, you'll end up creating a flock of people brimming with that good red stuff who are ready to be drained like an ice-cold juice box on a hot day. Knowing full well that if you don't drain them, you're going to be sorely underleveled for all the combat you'll have to do to keep them safe in the future. It's quite the dilemma, and what's worse is that occasionally you are given the option to embrace other people and turn them into vampires because they're seriously ill or relentless in their pursuit of you. However, this actually costs you XP, so you'll either need to have been feeding in the first place to build up your stocks, or you'll need to forego your own upgrades to save your own life, or someone else's life. When people say that being a vampire is a curse, I didn't think they meant because of all the complicated XP management, but now I think about it, Kind of makes sense. Saga edged toward the broken door. Her gun ready. Flashlight aimed ahead. Nightingale said it would be here. The Cauldron Lake General Store was overgrown. Left to rot. Saga thought about the cult of the tree. They had been here. Waiting. Planning a gruesome ritual murder. Alan Wake 2 is a pretty complicated game to sum up accurately and succinctly, but I think I can confidently state that the writing of one protagonist, Alan Wake, affects the world of the other protagonist, Saga Anderson. Well, I tried. What's interesting, though, is that this story mechanic is also the reason that Saga is able to upgrade her weapons throughout the game. When you think about it, a normal FBI agent in a sleepy Pacific Northwest town shouldn't be able to make their standard issue weapons, or ones that they find in the field, stronger or more capacious, or any number of other helpful add-ons, without visiting some kind of gunsmith and waiting several weeks. However, in the world of Alan Wake 2, Saga is able to find fragments of Alan's manuscripts lying around, which describe her weapons as taking on new qualities that are then reflected in the game. For example, if you want your handgun to hold more bullets, you simply have to decide to have Alan write that that's what happens. Saga had lost count of how many shots she'd fired, but she was sure it must have been more than she had in her magazine. And yet, she'd not run out of ammo. As if the magazine had grown to fit more bullets, she fired again. Alternatively, how about getting a health boost from killing an enemy with a shotgun? The report of the shotgun rang in the air. The enemy fell. Saga felt a surge of new energy. She'd been dead tired before, but was ready for more now. She would get through this. She continued on. Alan can even write into reality something completely off the wall, like your crossbow bolts magnetically attracting bullets. Saga had hit the taken with the crossbow. She switched to her gun and kept firing at it. The bullets hit home, following a strange trajectory, as if the bolt had carved a track in the air for them, a magnetic pull for them to follow. Man, now I can see why this guy's books are so popular. 
I've been waiting for you, Mr. Winters. How do you know my name? Anyone who is anyone has heard of the likes of you. A hero searching for his daughter. Though I must say, that castle arouses suspicion. Yeah, and so do you. Common Sense tells us that if you ever find yourself in a Resident Evil game, you should probably avoid the food. <laughs> Actually, I ordered the bread basket. And while that's usually true, the exact opposite is the case in Resident Evil Village, because in this grim survival horror masterpiece, chowing down is how you level up. That's thanks to the Duke, Resident Evil Village's roving merchant, and, apparently, a dab hand in the kitchen, as if you bring him the right ingredients, he will retreat back into his little covered wagon and cook you up a Romanian-inspired feast that will permanently boost your stats. Thank you. Now to cook! I'd love for you to enjoy as well. You'll need to do a little hunting and gathering, but once you've got the raw materials, this Michelin-starred merchant can whip you up meals as diverse as a soup that decreases the damage you take while guarding, grilled sausages that increase your health, and cabbage rolls that permanently increase your movement speed. Apologies for the wait. Here's your share. Which is impressive, because the only time I've tried to make cabbage rolls, they permanently increased my movement speed towards the bathroom. Mod Research Division has initiated a new Neuromod product development plan to better manufacture and test our cutting-edge devices. This streamlined process has allowed for developments in the Neuromod product line that Transtar is excited to bring to market. If Dead Space 2 taught us anything, it's that it is a bad idea to stick needles in your eye when on a space station full of monsters. Stick a needle in your eye. I mean, more of a bad idea than usual. And yet in Prey, you're expected to do exactly that to install Neuromods, the sci-fi MacGuffins that handle how you level up. Neuromods are Prey's answer to Bioshock's plasmids, and they allow you to unlock new skills and abilities by, well, I mean, you have to jab a spike into your eyeball, but honestly, it is worth it. In this new model, the rapid release needles have smaller insertion points. A softer, wider eye cup allows for easier serum distribution. That's because Neuromods come in three different categories. Scientist, which gives you hacking and medical skills. Engineer, which allows you to do such things as lift heavier objects and repair broken equipment. And security, which is all about boosting your combat effectiveness and stamina. And again, this is all achieved by performing amateur eye surgery on yourself. I hope there's nothing later in the game that requires me to actually see anything, is all I'm saying. Also, these are just the human neuromods. Later in the game, you'll get access to alien neuromods, which will allow you to do things like turn yourself into a coffee cup. Which at least has the benefit of me not having eyes anymore, because that's quite enough eye poking for one day. Duke and Forever was a bad game, sure, but did it also include some good ideas in Among All the Other Stuff? Also no. That being said, there is something charmingly Duke Nukem-esque about the way the game handles levelling up Duke's hit points, via the very in-character Ego Boosts. As anyone who's played a Duke Nukem game will know, Duke's ego is a big part of his personality. Whether it's wisecracking jokes at his enemy's expense, Blow it out your ass. or just admiring himself in a mirror. Damn. I'm looking good. I mean, it's certainly a look. In Duke Nukem Forever, this concept is taken one step further with Duke's ego acting as a literal overshield. Whenever he takes damage, it's his ego that is bruised first and foremost. As such, doing things that boost Duke's ego also allows him to take more hits. And these can be things as diverse as going to the bathroom, playing a perfect game of pool, 
Too easy. Yeah! You are the best, Duke! Making some popcorn. And of course, photocopying your butt. Anyway, there are loads of ego boosts for Duke to collect throughout the game, and I hope he collected them all, because quite frankly, when the terrible reviews for this game came out, his ego must have taken quite the battering. Wow, he's so cool. Yeah, I thought he'd be taller. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video about weird ways to level up in video games. But there's a weird way to level up in real life. And that, my friends, is by watching one of these two videos. They will impart skills and knowledge onto you that will be come in handy and be useful in your day-to-day -day life. How? That's not for me to say, but you'll know when it happens. Anyway, click on one of these two uh, and be prepared for what is coming in the future. That's it's not ominous. It's just good to be prepared, isn't it?